Sledgehammer Horror Guys. I am Ken Sledge, and with me today I have Josh Burwanger of the Burwanger Band, formerly of the Anniversary. Josh, how you doing, man? Good. How are you doing, Ken? Thank you for having me. I'm doing great, and again, I want to let you guys know that song you heard at the beginning during those beginning credits, that was Horror Show from the Burwanger Band, available on iTunes, also available on physical media, so if you dug it, get it. You'll also be hearing more of that at the end credits. Uh, thank you for letting me use that. No, no problem. You can use whatever you want of mine. <laughs> I appreciate it so much. So um, before we get started on your first horror movie, let's catch up a little bit. How have things been for you in quarantine? Anything new going on you got under your hat you want to tell us about? Or, um, I mean, I don't know. It's been, I kind of am one of those people who really don't leave the house in general. So it hasn't been too weird. But I'm also, I don't know, I might be like sort of weird in a way where it, I just, I also haven't been in a public place since March. Oh, so man. I haven't, I've had like all my groceries delivered. And so I don't know. I just like, I was just kind of like thinking about like the stuff you don't really need to do, you know, like in life. But I mean, it's like, I can't, you know, you can't go to a restaurant, really. You right. can't really. So it's like, what can you really do anyway? So I just like kind of like go for walks and like chill out outside a little bit. And then I've been, you know, I did a bunch, I wrote a new record. I did demos for that. And then I've actually been writing a horror movie screenplay or script, script. So I'm not screenplay, but either, whatever. That is so awesome. And I, we were talking about it a little before this. We're not going to tell you guys what it's about. I don't even know what it's about. But I do want to <laughs> say, once you get completed with it and you are ready to fill people in, please let me know because I would love to share it with people. I'm To say I'm excited would probably be one of the biggest understatements in the world. I'm, if you guys don't know, Josh is a huge, huge horror movie fan. Um, the stuff he has, the collections he has, it's pretty rad. So to see that he's actually taking the next step and writing his own script is pretty exciting for me because his brain and his heart is definitely going to be in the right spot. Yeah, I feel it's, I'm excited about it. Um, and, you know, I was, you and I were talking a little bit earlier, just like, it's hard to find really like good original ideas. And um, just like, even if they're not, I mean, you know, mine's, the what I'm writing right now isn't like this whole new, like, it's not like Nightmare on Elm Street, this whole new, it's, it's not like a totally original idea. But sure even if it's not, it's like hard to find something that's like even cool and like, you know, a nostalgia, right. like a little bit of a nostalgia or take, you know? And I feel all the ones that do get the hype are the ones that are like, oh, that movie is like the explorers meets, um, I don't know, whatever Stranger Things takes from E.T. <laughs> you know, like those are the ones that kind of, it's like, oh, this, you know, this is just that, but now, right. you know, which is cool. That's totally cool. That's, you know, um, but there's nothing. Yeah, you're right. It's really hard um, to find something really that just like kind of like, I feel like the last thing I saw that was like, r that I really like dug, which was also kind of just like a nostalgia throwback. It wasn't totally original, but it was, it was, I liked House of the Devil a lot. Okay. And that was like 10 years back now. I thought High Tension was cool. And that was probably like 10 years back. Um, gosh, I thought Crawl was kind of cool. That alligator film. I, I liked Crawl a lot, actually. I, yeah, I'm a big creature movie fan. So Same I here, thought yeah, that was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, that was a good one. I'm trying to think of any other new ones. Well, I, I had Josh Eppard from Coheed and Cambria on a couple weeks ago. And something yeah. he brought up with doing the remakes that they do. I think that, that really does kind of hinder the original ideas. Maybe some of the original ideas that would get pushed to the front are actually getting pushed to the background because the studios are more into doing the remake thing. They know that they got a yeah. cash cow there. So I think that yeah. the horror genre kind of suffers altogether. I'm not saying the remakes are bad. I loved Halloween yeah. 2018. I loved the new Child's Play. But for every Halloween 2018 and Child's Play remake we get, we're losing out on what could potentially be a new Ghostbusters or a new um, Dawn of the Dead, Land of the Dead, Night of the Living Dead. Or, or just a whole new movie. You know, someone sure. sent me a thing that was like, the other day it was like horror movies and it had like all the, like Friday the 13th, this, this, and it was like best remake, or best uh, horror movies with that, uh, like parts, like, you know, part one, two, yeah. three, four, what are your top three? And I just was kind of thinking like, which one of these don't need 
sequels, you know, sure. like more like they just could have stood alone and just been great. You know, it's like Cabin in the Woods is like a perfect example. That was a very good movie. And like, you know, I guess they could do a prequel if they wanted to, but they don't need to. And like, right. it, it just stands, it stands alone. And it's a great film. It's a cool, really cool, uh, great, maybe not a great film, but like a really cool, good movie. No, you know, I, I'm, I'm with you, actually. I'll say it's a great film because not only does it transcend genres in that movie, yeah. but it really is very, very intelligent showing you it is, how yeah, yeah. this happens, you know, yeah. and I laughed a lot during that movie. Like oh, I had a lot no. of good belly laughs in that movie. Oh, it's it's it is a good it's a good movie for sure, definitely. I'm, so I'm glad you brought that up, man. Because that was on my I did a on the channel. I did a top five favorite horror comedies, and that was actually on the list. Yeah. So you know, trick I, I trick or treat was a good one. Yes, with the little pumpkin head kid, Sam. Yeah, yeah. Not to be confused with trick or treat, which is a great one. Sammy <laughs> Kerr, the heavy metal horror movie. <laughs> the classic. And it, it's. I'm I'm sitting here trying to think of movies that have come out. Um, see, I I did like the Collector and the Collection. I don't know how long it's been since those, and I've heard they're actually going to do a sequel to those as well. On um, the Collected, so I'm kind of excited to see where that goes too. I don't know if you've seen the Collector or not. Is that is that Kevin Bacon? No, um, it's I haven't, I haven't seen these. I can't think of the. It's a great movie. The the villain in it. It's kind of like Saw meets Final Destination. I would say. Okay, okay. The villain is one of the scariest dudes, man. Like he's just in a black leather mask, but he's got these almost green cat eyes. Okay, and all right. You you should check it. Start with the collector. That's on. Um, I want to say Hulu right now. It's either Hulu or Prime. Okay, but cool. if if you're into the suspense horror type, th these are really really good movies, man. Okay, yeah, 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 I'll check this out. So let's get into while we're on this, your first horror movie, which was. My first horror movie was Creep Show, 1982. That's when it came out, but I didn't see it till 1984, I believe. What what a way to start your horror life, man! Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a uh, a great. I mean, it was well. It was weird because I mean, I saw it super. I saw it in kindergarten, right? So it was like mind blowing in the sense of just I went to kindergarten in the morning half day so then I'd have to go to my neighbor's house they were called the Copanex this was in Indiana and um he was the youngest at my age Robbie and then sure he's had older brothers like four older brothers and so when they got home from middle school and high school they popped in creep show and I remember just sitting in front of the tv and they like what is this? And it's so engaging as far as like the way it's uh, edited and then like mm -hmm. the way, like the look of it, the comic book feel, the cartoon. And yep. so, you know, my mind is like He-Man mostly and like kind of like into like weird, I mean, like, I don't know. I don't think it's like, but He-Man is a lot of like lizards and demons and things like yeah. that. And uh, so seeing that the first time, it was just like opened my mind of like that and Evil Dead 2, which came like about a couple years, a few years later, I think I saw that in third grade. But those two movies both just were like, oh, you can do anything you want. You know, you can be and funny, you could like, it could be scary, it could be depressing. I mean, Creepshow is depressing in a lot of parts. Yeah. You know? And, and for those of you that have not seen Creep Show, it is an anthology movie, so it has different stories throughout the movie. It's not just one continuous storyline. Um, and I, it's funny because I didn't see, I seen Creep Show 2 first. My okay. mom loved Creep Show 2. I yeah. didn't see Creep Show until I was probably 15 or 16. Yeah. And I had already seen The Naked Guns by then. So seeing Leslie, yeah. <laughs> you know, seeing him in that movie was just blowing me away. You know? and he's such How long a good... can you hold your breath? Yeah, he's such a good actor, you know? Oh, man. Like, he was in so many serious things before, you know, mm -hmm. before Young Guns and Repossessed. Was that the one he was in, the Exorcist? Yeah, well, and then Airplane, you know? Airplane. Oh, yeah, Airplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot. I mean, like, <laughs> so many things. But, uh, yeah, it was written by Stephen King, mm -hmm. like, um, directed by George Romero. That's, um, such a, that's such a fantastic yeah. team to have, and it shows in the movie, too. Tom Savini effects, 
<laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's perfect. But Creepshow 2, I saw Creepshow 2 in the theater, actually. That that one's great also. Mm-hmm. Loved it. I, um, I think The Hitchhiker is one of my, one of the things in my life that gave me the most nightmares, you know. Thanks for the ride, lady. Yeah, my dad to this day, because he took me to see it because I wasn't old enough to go. So uh-huh. to this day, he, he'll still say yeah thanks for the rat you know at random <laughs> that's so see thanks, that's thanks awesome man because to connect that with your dad you know because i did a my first horror movie with my son you know and we talked about this mm-hmm. and i think that's so important you know something as little as watching a horror movie with your kids it really builds that bond together so and it yeah, still shows yeah. to this day you and your dad still have that connection with that oh yeah 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 so but yeah it's a it was funny he took me to all those took me to they live all, all the Nightmare on Elm Streets after three. Three I snuck into the theater to see. Um, but yeah, he was all about taking me. Tales from the Dark Side, which is kind of in the same vein as uh, Creepshow. I always thought that Tales from the Dark Side was Creepshow 3 until they released Creepshow 3. Well, I mean, technically Creepshow 3 is, isn't even a part of the franchise. They just like took the name. Yeah, see, and I didn't even watch it. I heard nothing but bad things about it. I don't know if you liked it or not. Oh, it's it's like the TV show. It's not very good. Yeah, see, so I'm glad I skipped it, man. Like, the TV show, I liked the finger and the werewolf one. That was about it for me, man. Like, after that, it just, yeah. there was way too much bad for me. It. I hope the next season, they, like, you know, it was, like, a first, and they, like, learned a few things. And But yeah. I, just, I just thought it was poor. It was poorly done on a lot of, a lot of different. A lot of the episodes were so slow and boring. Like, nothing was happening. I think the thing with it is like, you know, so you're dealing with like Tales from the Dark Side, a TV show, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, Outer Limits, um, uh, Twilight Zone, those style of, you know, stories. And with this creep show, TV show, I just felt like within the first minute, you knew what the ending was going to be. And it just took forever to get to that point. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, I absolutely can see that. So I don't know. I. I'll I'll check out the second one and you know it's it was the first one so hopefully they make the new one a little bit better. So. I'm with you. I'm I'll if it's horror I'm gonna check it out. Um, my, yeah. one of my best friends he he's the one that told me not to watch Creep Show three and I, <laughs> yeah. I did it. But he's also the one that told me to watch Tales from the Hood two. Was there so, a Tales from the Hood two? Yeah, it's on Netflix, man. Don't it, do it. It's not don't. hard. <laughs> oh, don't do it. Tales oh. from the Hood was fantastic. I love Tales from the Hood. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. Two oh, is just great. not very good. <laughs> yeah. So um, back to Creepshow. Usually I ask people what scene affected them most. But with Creepshow, since we got an anthology, which of the uh, segments do you think was your favorite and why? Well, ultimately, the father is the most terrifying in the because in, it's like real, you know? I want my cake, man. No, no, no. The father of uh, the, like, how it starts out. With oh, um, the, the drinking. The, the guy, like, yelling at his kid, who's actually played by Stephen King's child. and um, The comic book kid. Yeah, it starts out, like, if you haven't seen it, it starts out with, like, a little, like, it's supposed to be real day. And this, yeah. like, abusive dad is just screaming at his, like, what looks to be like a seven-year-old child who's reading creep show the comic mm-hmm. and he's just like you have this filth how dare you if i see you with this again you won't sit down for a week you know mm-hmm. and it's also funny that he's yelling at him for that but the kid's entire room is like horror stuff <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> hey, what, what did you think dad but the dad's like terrifying you know mm-hmm. it's real. but as far as the story uh the little movies go um being in kindergarten uh they're all scary but they're all like oh my gosh this is amazing but the crate was the one that really got me i was just like oh jesus what the hell and i don't want to ruin it but you know right was, the crate was one but yeah all of them are great you know it's like uh the one stephen king plays the um Lonesome Death of Jordy, so something like that one's like funny yet super depressing. Also, yeah, no, I was to say that when you wanted to talk about how it was depressing, yeah, you, that's where you really hit the nail on the head with that one. Yeah, that one's super depressing because the guy seems so nice, you know, mm-hmm. he's kind of like a, 
happy-go-lucky dude and kind of a dummy, but like a nice, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like he's great. And Stephen King plays it so hilariously. Yeah. So funny. Um, yeah, but they're all, I mean, that was the one that the crate was, you know, Adrian Barbeau's in that and she's so good in it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, she was in the first creep show, I think of the new television series, the first episode. Anyway. I think she was. And then, yeah, the one with Tobin Bell in it. I think so. Yeah. 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 Um, see, I, I, I still to this day, every father's day, we watch creep show at, yeah. just because of, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, so th- that one always affected me. And then obviously the one with uh, Ted Danson and um, we were just talking about him, Leslie yeah. Nielsen. Yeah. I, the acting in that one is just so phenomenal. Those two bouncing off each other. Yeah. So good, man. Yeah. And uh, Ed Harris dancing in the Father's Day. <laughs> Pretty genius. Ed Harris yeah. is cool. Um, and, then, and then there's the cockroach episode which is disgusting. Yeah. Uh, you know? <laughs> um, and uh, it's, yeah, I like think I read something somewhere at one point that they had like 20,000 cockroaches oh, for one of those scenes. But then I read something else that a lot of the stuff is like raisins or like dry pieces of dirt in like the huge like it's doing like all the bugs and everything right those those are two completely di- yeah, you gotta yeah. love the internet man yeah now you can't eat raisins anymore <laughs> if you did in the first place <laughs> so with, with this movie how often would you say you do you still watch this movie to this day every every now and then or is this something that yeah shout um factory actually did a 4k um blu-ray that they put out so i got that um I think it's about a year and a half ago, two years ago, they put it out and uh, it has a bunch of bonuses on it. Um, it's weird though, because like, I'm so, I still have it on VHS and the 4k, it makes it almost too clean, you know, mm-hmm. where it's like some of the movies like Suspiria, um, the original looks great in 4k. Like I really like it, but creep show in 4k. It's like, I kind of just want to watch it grainy and like, yeah a little bit of grain in the VHS. And uh, so it's kind of weird with horror movies. I think it's kind of like doing the restoration. Um, some of t- Sometimes I really enjoy it and sometimes it just doesn't work out. Well, so, well, it's my daughter. We just watched her first horror movie last night, which was Gremlins 2. Oh, and yeah. you, I, I got that in, yeah, I got that in 4K. And um, Gizmo looks so, I don't know if you looked this fake when we were kids, right. but do <laughs> It looks so bad now. Like even her, she was like, "That's a toy." That's the problem with Creep Show is the Father's Day one. Father does not look very good, but then the Jordy one that actually looks really good. Yeah. Um. So it's just kind of like, yeah, it exposes some of the practical effects that mm-hmm. shouldn't be as exposed. You know, because when they're putting it out, it's like, oh, we could get away with this with this kind of lighting. But yeah then when they do that sometimes when they do the restoration the, they change the lighting and it's like oh and you could see every little yeah you know, latex mishap or so forth <laughs> well are you i don't know if you're a fan of it or not uh sleepaway camp are, are you a fan of that oh hell yeah i got oh yeah i'm all all i'll say three all three of them i love i mean like the so my thing was like so in third grade i went to a catholic school and um i saw this kid and he had this we were it was like kind of like we, we, i grew up in like before i moved to kansas i was like 30 minutes from chicago okay. so there's this local heavy metal band called diamond rex and we were really into heavy i was really into heavy metal and horror movies in third grade he was also but i didn't know him yet so first day he had this diamond rex tape and then we were in line to leave and i was like oh that diamond rex tape what's up with that and, he, and we started to talk and he was like, do you like horror movies? I was like, yeah. I was like, have you seen Creepshow? Because that was like my go-to, obviously. Sure. Yeah, have you seen? Or he goes, no. He was like, have you seen Halloween? And I was like, no. So he was like, asked me to spend the night. And he had an older brother, an older sister, who were just like rooms plastered and like, you know, this is the 80s, room plastered, all like Hit Parader, all those heavy metal magazines, horror stuff. So we would just watch horror movies nonstop. 
and yeah. uh, sleepaway camp. <laughs> it's like, I remember watching that one because the older brother had hit all his friends over. <laughs> I, don't, I can't, actually can't tell that story. <laughs> but but um, I remember get, like watching it with all of them and then like getting made fun of at one point. And then of course the, the ending. ending happens and it's just like genius. And then, you know, in part two and three, uh, Bruce Springsteen's sister plays Angela. Oh, I didn't know that's who that was. Pamela Springsteen. That's awesome. She was also in Fast Times at Ridgemont High as one of the two cheerleaders. Well, what, what I was going to say about Sleepaway Camp, it, the version you have, is it the Blu-ray by any chance? I have the one where they put out the box set that had like the medical cross on it, and then they had to take it off the market and redo it because they got in trouble for doing that. So it's, I don't um, think it's, it's not Blu-ray. Well, if, if you watch the Blu-ray, I'll, I'll send you this video because I have it. The okay. part where they're looking in the door and the girl's like, what are you doing? It's totally the cousin. Like with the lighting they have now, you can see yeah. it clear as day that it's not oh, Angela. Man. Oh my gosh. So when you watch it, it's like such a red herring, but it's so obvious that it's not her. Yeah. So I'll, yeah. I'll get a video of it. I let a buddy of mine borrow it today, but tomorrow when he brings it back to me, I will get a video of it and I will make sure I send it to you so you can check perfect, it out. Like Perfect example of the 4K. Yeah. Yes. You know, sometimes things are better left not messed with, you know? Yeah, and, and then I'll, I think a little bit also has to do with newer TVs and stuff because, like, mm -hmm. the lighting's all, like, smart TVs. It seems like, I don't know. I have, like, the smart TV upstairs, and then I have, like, my laser disc player and VHS plugged to, like, an older TV downstairs. So if I want to, you know. Still rock the laser disc, man. That's awesome. Dude, I do, because you could still get a lot of titles on Laserdisc, like horror things that you can't find, like even streaming. I'm sure you could find it, like if you do the stealing on the internet stuff, whatever, yeah. like, pirating. Um, but I don't do that. So, and la Laserdiscs are cool, man. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm definitely something I've talked about on almost every episode. I'm a huge physical media guy. Definitely. Um, definitely. I will stream something if it's available for streaming. If I yeah. enjoy it, I will buy it. I just bought Fraser Park Recut. I streamed it. had the guys on. Great movie if you haven't seen it. It's on Amazon Prime. Um, but I loved it so much I bought the physical copy. I look at it the same way I look at music, you know. If you want to, you know, listen to a song or two on YouTube and then buy the album, that's one thing. When I go to a store, I try on my pants before I buy them. I want to make sure I like them. But if you yeah. like the pants, man, you got to buy them. You know, that's, yeah. that's your guys' oh. lifeline. You guys, you know, the people in, in Hollywood, that's that's your guys' lifeline, man. So the people that are pirating this shit, that's so lame. I'm, I'm with you on that. So lame. Yeah, I'm a big physical media guy also. Sometimes I'm just like, what am I doing? <laughs> but I'm also like, I don't know. I like, I really like, if I like a movie, I like the bonuses and I like checking all that stuff out and like. Special you know. features, man. Commentary. I love watching commentary. My wife can't stand it. I yeah. love watching commentary over movies, man. Anytime doing one with Arnold Schwarzenegger is like usually the best. Uh, <laughs> any, like, Conan and uh, Total Recall are two of my favorite uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger commentaries. He's, See, I, I got to check these out then. <laughs> and Total Recall, I think it's the one where he just kind of repeats what the director says, but pretends like he said it himself. <laughs> If you could be in the room, you're probably just staring at him like I'm taking that line. Yeah. What do you think about it? The sunset happens. He goes, and there's a sunset. <laughs> All right. At least you told me, Arnie. I would have never known if you didn't tell yeah. me. <laughs> um, so uh, before we get back into Creep Show, just your opinion. Are you more of a fan while we're on the subject? Practical effects or CGI? Oh, 100% practical. Thank God. Me too. Oh, well, I always point to look at um, Pet Cemetery, the scene where Gage cuts um, oh, the his ankle, ankle yeah. and then he bites the neck out. Like those, even the kid doing the practical effects, yeah. that looks so good, man. That's such a good job on that movie. I think even the ones that are not that good look better. Like there's like a time in like early 2000s, like late, uh, maybe early 2000s, mid 2000s, where you would see it, a practical effect, and be like, cause that's when like CGI was like, you know, you had the Lord of the Rings and like yeah. Star Wars again. And you're seeing these and you're like, for me, I'm like, ooh. But, and then you go back and see some of the bad, like in a, like say like a really cheesy, like newly deads or some like, uh, 
che- like ticks, like some cheesier trauma movie or something. And you're like, whoa, that actually doesn't look bad anymore because your right. like mind is it like been accustomed to like seeing like Jar Jar Binks, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. Yeah, so, so I, I'm yeah. with you. That's something I've always said. I'm a practical. Effect. I'd rather have a mediocre practical effect than a good CGI effect because I love the feeling of a practical effect. I love the work that goes into it. Um, and a, a mediocre practical effect, nine times out of ten, looks better than the CGI effect anyway. I Agreed. Mean, Agreed. I always point to Jason X. You talk about. I love Jason X. I am a fan of Jason X. I think it's a very entertaining movie, but the. CGI in that movie is it's almost video game bad. Jason X? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I I've only seen that one once. So I kind of can't remember as well like what the CGI was like. It's it's like almost like lifetime movie made for TV bad. Yeah, I just knew Jason looked like a mighty morphin power ranger. <laughs> That's awesome, especially when it gets reanimated with the nanobots. Yeah. Um, yeah what was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but no, no practical effects. I mean, so good. Mm-hmm. So when we back to Creep Show, when you think of Creep Show, what's the first thing that pops into your head? I mean, sitting in the Copenex basement and watching it, like over. I mean, they were play. They play it every day for like. Two oh. weeks. It was just like they just threw it in, and like I'm sure they were like probably like the older kids were probably like smoking pot and doing other things while I was just like in front of the TV, you know, sure. enamored. And uh, but that's you know that's what I think of, and just like my that and Evil Dead too, just like like I said earlier, it's just like really opened up of just like this idea of you know there's no like there's nothing you can't do. It's endless mm-hmm. possibilities in, uh, in film, but like also anything, you know, when you look at it for the arts. Yeah. Uh, um, Evil Dead 2 especially, it was just like this, like you just don't know what's going to happen next. And it's like, takes place all in this night and this guy like getting his butt kicked and just, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and like all those effects, like, it's amazing. I, I, I want to meet one person that tells me they didn't laugh the first time they saw Bruce Campbell dancing with that lamp. Oh my gosh. It's hilarious. It's terrifying. It's gory. It's like, you know. Evil Dead 2 is probably one of the most perfect movies out there, man. It, like it really is. It really probably is one of the most perfect movies. It transcends the, uh, the horror. Like you said, there's horror, there's comedy, there's drama with the family. I mean, it's, yeah. it's like the perfect movie. I mean, when that movie, when that opened up when that like the se- the first scene like when the book ran red with like and it just like yeah. that, the scroll like necronomicon ex mortis roughly translated book of the dead book like it just dead. Like, i was just like oh my gosh yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was, was i don't know if you've seen it but have you by any chance seen the evil dead musical that they do no i haven't um I, I had some friends who went and the skits it's, good oh dude it's so good you yeah. but you got to sit in the blood zone so you can get squirted yeah. with the blood and <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it's very very entertaining man i would strongly recommend it actually my wife took me for our uh first wedding anniversary uh-huh. uh that was the our that was my wedding get our anniversary gift so okay. it was like wow you know yeah. you know you have a good wife if that's a anniversary gift <laughs> 15 years later she stuck around so i'm doing something right that's good. That's awesome, though. Yeah, I would hopefully one day I could check it out again if it's ever performed again. Yeah. Uh, so where are you at now? Are you still out in Kansas? Yeah, Kansas. Okay. Yeah, man. I really hope that they come out there for you, man. Because I think you, being the horror fan that you are and the Evil Dead fan you are, I think you would really, really enjoy it. Uh, I would tell you to watch it on YouTube, but don't do it, man. Wait till it comes to you in person. Cause it'll. You need the whole. It's funny. It's they do a very good job. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Very good. Um, so back to creep show again. Um, I kind of asked what the favorite kill is for people, but that's, that's so hard with this movie. So let's just go with death in general. What what death in this movie do you think is your favorite? Well, I mean, the best one probably has to be when um, father twists the lady's neck. That one, but then I don't know. That cockroach scene is pretty. <sighs> Pretty, uh, it's gnarly, man. 
Yeah. And then when he feeds uh, Barbeau to the crate, that one's good. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's just a lot of good ones, you know? Yeah. That's, that's, that's it's, it's hard with this movie because this is one of those movies that there's, it's, with it being an anthology, there's so many different things to choose from and so many to like for so many different reasons. Yeah. It's not like Mike Myers. I, in, you know, Halloween, I can choose the one where Mike Myers sticks the guy to the wall because that was the coolest yeah. one in the movie. You know, like yeah. this is one that you have so many different options and um, yeah. kind of related to Creepshow and Creepshow 2. Which one is your favorite of the two? Do you still prefer the original or do you like two more? I like the original the most. Um, I, I like them both. They're both great. So I don't, I mean, but I think there's what, three stories in two and then there's five. And five. One. So I, I just, I don't know. I, one is obviously, they're both great, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, That's it. it's, it's, yeah. do I want a hamburger or a hot dog today? Yeah. You know, my answer will change every time. Cause if you ask me on father's day, I'm going to tell you creep show is my favorite. If you yeah. ask me when I'm getting ready to go out to the lake for a barbecue, I'm going to tell you creep show too. And the blob <laughs> is my favorite, you know, yeah. but it's not the blob in that. It's, um, uh, the, rat? the raft. Yeah. 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 And then so, those waxwork records put out, um, both of those scores on, um, vinyl. So they have like, it's really good packaging. And um, if anyone's looking for the, the movie score. Yeah. It's, it's really worth checking out. They did House, hey. I know you're a House fan. They did House on Vinyl too. Oh, and that's, uh, that's, that's such a, yeah, I could talk to you all night about House, man. Like yeah. that's my, that was my first horror movie. That still to this day is my favorite horror movie. I absolutely adore that movie. So good. Richard Mole, William mm-hmm. Pat. Yeah. Their first scene together, man, when they're outside by the trash can and he's talking so much shit about his aunt. And he's like, that's my aunt. And he's like, oh, heart of gold. Real heart of gold. Oh, yeah. George Went, right? Yeah, George Went. That's who it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that whole scene right there, man, that I laugh every time I watch that scene, man. Dude, it's so good. I need to I, I need to watch. I think those are both on Prime right now. Yep. Um, yeah, I need to see that. I've never seen part four. You were telling me a little bit about it. Don't. Yeah. No, like it's like this movie it can't even make up its mind on what it is like there's a look there's a difference between a horror comedy and a movie that doesn't know if it's a horror or a comedy right and this one like out spoilers if you haven't seen house four and you really want to stop the video now um roger's family william cat his family's completely different it's still him but he ends up he dies in a car accident in the first three minutes of the movie and then like the coolest part of the movie is that a pizza gets possessed and it's a little talking pizza. That's like the coolest part of the movie. So, I mean, you could watch it just for that, but I just don't get your hopes up on it being anywhere near one or two. <laughs> don't get your hopes up on house four, everyone. <laughs> yeah. um, so usually when I end these, I always uh, ask people, we're talking creep show, uh, a skull rating. Uh, if you had to rank this movie on a scale of zero to five skulls, uh, zero being the worst, five being the best, what are you going to give creep show? Nostalgic it gets a five um in like i don't know maybe it does get a five all around just because of the originality around it but mm-hmm. there's a few things i would change so small things but that was right. done then, so it's and it's, you can't look back that's kind of why evil dead was two is so good because they kind of got to do it again in a way mm-hmm. you know because it's very similar to one um so i'll say five it gets five no. Can't argue, man. Like, to me, like, growing up, I loved Anth- – I wish I would have watched Creep Show earlier in life, but I loved, you know, Tales from the Crypt. Uh, like, oh, I was telling you, Tales from the Hood. Like, any yeah. type of anthology horror. I remember staying up late just to watch Tales from the Crypt oh, on same. HBO. Friday you know? night, HBO. Yes. You know, so anything anthology to me has always been super interesting because even if there's three episodes on it and there's one you don't like, it can redeem itself in the next two. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, there's nothing better than the intro on a Friday night to Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. yeah. God, you got your so pizza. Good. Your for me, it was my either my Surge or my Crystal Clear Pepsi. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> waiting, <laughs> waiting yeah. for Tales from the Crypt, man. Oh my gosh, there's nothing better than a Surge and a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what my dinner tonight is, man. Now I just gotta try to find a Surge. I think they still make them extremely loaded citrus drink. Dude, they're so see, I've seen them in like the like cans, like they're almost like monster cans. Yeah. So good, man. I'm 
about to go to the store and grab one here in a little bit. But um, oh. I was going to ask you, too, while we're doing this, I am going to start here in the next couple of weeks doing a new segment called Coffee and Killers, where we sit around, we drink coffee, and instead of talking about our first horror movie, we pick a slasher film, we completely dissect it. I'd love to have you on for that. Is that something you'd be willing to do here in the future at some point? Definitely. Can I drink tea? You can drink whatever you – as long as you're drinking with me, I don't care. All right. It's done. <laughs> um, again, guys, I do want to give um, Morgan McGuire on Instagram a huge shout-out because mm-hmm. she's the one that hooked me up with Josh. Um, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be doing this episode. And uh, the anniversary was huge for me. I love the Burwanger band. You guys – check this out if you did the anniversary was huge for you know people in our age group when we were young getting us into that scene that we were in you know so much respect to you man i don't think i all the guests i've had you know taking back sunday coheed and cambria the anniversary without you guys i am one thousand percent sure i'm not the man that i am today so oh, thanks brother you guys may not realize how many lives you truly touched and changed but you really have and, you know, it means so much having you on the show. It's a dream come true. Being able to talk to you about something we're both so passionate about and sharing that same passion is such a cool thing. So thank you so much for coming on. And I will be talking to you here soon. Hell yeah. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. And we'll see you here soon. I still want you. Yeah.